Destroying computer keys is part of Eric Jensen's process. He's an artist who takes these hard to recycle pieces and turns them into pixelated artworks. Just one of his artworks can consist of up to 40,000 keys. That's about 460 keyboards. Each key is carefully dyed and placed in exactly the right spot so that when you look from afar, all the tiny squares will come together to form a full picture. His technique is similar to pointillism, which was popular in the 1880s. But instead of paint and dots arranged to create a picture, the square keys mimic pixels. He calls this tech pointillism. Eric has used this technique to recreate famous paintings, like Johannes Vermeer's Girl with a Pearl Earring, Vincent van Gogh's The Starry Night, and Leonardo da Vinci's Mona Lisa. Basically everybody in the whole world have used a keyboard before. They've written love letters, they uh, write emails, they work on them, they learn from them. And so there's that connection. So I was really interested in that process of taking something trashy or broken or old and to make it something beautiful and malleable. Using keys means that his pieces have to follow a strict grid pattern, like real pixels on a computer screen. And since each key is a specific and unchangeable size and shape, he has to figure out how to create curves without physically cutting off pieces of the square. That's the hardest part of his process. Imagine trying to make a circle using a bunch of squares. So how exactly does it happen? Eric has to blend the edges without causing the picture to become too blurry. For example, the eyes on Girl with a Pearl Earring are only a few pixels. So he has to carefully decide which colors to use to make the eye look realistic. This is why most of his pieces are on the larger side. It makes it easier to create fine details. The smaller the artwork, the more difficult it becomes to create detail. A piece using 900 keys may sound like a lot of material to work with, but in reality, it's only 30 by 30 pixels, which is very minimal space. Each piece starts with a keyboard, or more like 150 to 200 keyboards. That's how many he goes through in a month and his collection totals over 8,000 keyboards. My whole band is full of keyboards! When he receives a keyboard, one of the first things he does is pop off the keys. How? He takes a flathead screwdriver, wedges it underneath the keys, and yanks them off in a line. Then they're all thrown into a bath of soapy water for 24 hours. This gets rid of any stains, food, cat hair, and anything else that might get stuck in there from years of use. Many of the keyboards are ones that were rejected by recycling companies for being too difficult to recycle. To properly undergo the recycling process, a keyboard needs to be taken apart completely, separating the plastic, the metal, the cords, and the wires. For many recycling companies that receive hundreds of keyboards a day, this is simply too much work. To create the colored keys, Eric dyes them. This can only be done with keys that are lighter in color, like beige, white, and yellow. After many rounds of trial and error, he's created a secret dye recipe that won't smudge the characters. He also ensures that he gets different shades of the same color, so that it can create depth and dimension. It's so much fun to see all these colors, and you'll notice like the gradations of all the different colors. It depends on how long the keys stay in the dye is how dark they get. If they stay in for a couple minutes, they get pretty dark. If they stay for a couple of seconds, second. They're a lot lighter. See, like this came from the same dye batch. It's really light versus this one is really dark. Before starting a new painting, Eric uses a couple of different computer programs to pixelate the picture he's trying to recreate. The digital pixelation is not exact, but rather a guide to help him get the measurements right. Eric makes countless adjustments while creating the artwork. This can include continuously switching out lighter and darker shades to create shadows or add more clarity. Laying down the keys can be a long and tedious process, like putting together a jigsaw puzzle that's been broken into thousands of pieces. But there's an upside to using them. It's able to give Eric's work a 3D effect that can be used to create depth. That's because the keyboards he uses comes from different companies and were made in different years. The older the key, the taller it is. Eric's every move has to be exact because every key is glued on one by one. And once it's attached, there's no going back. 
Through the process, he's learned to appreciate tiny imperfections, like crooked pieces or the smudged ink on the letters. That's because when he steps back to take a look, every flaw disappears, and he's reached the goal of creating the bigger picture. And that's not all there is to his pieces. When you take a good look, you can also see that he's hidden quotes in his paintings, using the letters printed on the keys. I dream of painting, and then I paint my dream, Vincent van Gogh. If people knew how hard I had to work to gain mastery, it would not seem so wonderful at all. Michelangelo. <laughs>